Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Okay. Let's meet the panel. Trevor. I'm, I'm Ari. Charlie. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to be going over a short story that made it into the Best American Short Stories uh, of 2018, uh, which this version uh, was uh, guest edited by Roxane Gay, who is known for her book Bad Feminist. And uh, Heidi Hitler, who is the series editor, uh, oversaw the whole thing. Uh, and we're going to be going over a short story called The Art of Losing by Yoon Choi. And the discussion starter that I have for this work is, did you learn anything about Alzheimer's from the short story? Did you find the strategy of having more than one point of view to be helpful? Speaking from experience... I, if, if I may, speaking from experience, yes, I've, I really didn't learn too much because I lived through it, even though it was very brief, uh, but this was almost spot on with me, so it was, uh... You, you had, uh, you had memory loss, or are you talking about with somebody else? Oh, uh, my grandmother. Okay. My grandmother, yes. Yeah, my, um, I hate to say this right now, and maybe at the time of this goes out, I don't know if he's going to be alive anymore and he not, or not, but... My uh, my Zadie has Alzheimer's, or he's not. not he doesn't have Alzheimer's, but he's losing his memory slowly. It's not mm -hmm. something that's happening really fast. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually not happening fast. It's happening like last year, right around this time. He was perfect. He was alert. It's progressive. But now he's starting to fail a little more, and we've had to move him into a different facility. Yeah. And I don't want to go into too yeah. much more detail, but this story was it spoke to me, mm -hmm. and it kind of, in a way. Literature doesn't always change my mind about things, but in th reading this story, it changed me from, oh great, now I I'm going to have to deal with this slow uh, memory loss of my grandfather, the personal experience, to like, well, he's lived a good life, um, and this is just a, a um, usual... Um, What's the word? A path. That, that this is a thing that happens, and it's mm -hmm. occurrence. Very, uh, occurrence. Yeah, and it's very. Uh, it's, just, it's what it is. Yeah. It's what life yeah. is. Unfortunately, I think there's the someone made the uh, or someone said that uh, the uh, they remember past experiences like it was yesterday, and yep. it's yesterday that they can't remember. Right. Uh, and I remember uh, based off of reading so Flowers for Algernon, long term memory. that uh, Charlie's mother, not mine. No, not his. Uh, uh, she only remembered up to a certain point. Right. And once the... Uh, also, I think she may have had dementia, though. Once it kicks in, it then it... Yeah. Then it... Uh, then life pauses right there. And... Uh, but what broke, what broke my heart is toward the end of the story when uh, the... Should not be... Uh, when... Uh, uh, Mose, uh, when he he recalls them talking about him and saying that he's going to become difficult to deal with, but he knows that somebody needs to watch uh, his grandson Jonathan. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know uh, he doesn't know who it is, even though he was <laughs> given the obligation to do so. But he knows that somebody needs to watch him, and he's going to. Uh, curl up in the corner and keep an eye on him until somebody does. Right. And and that, that, that's, just, like, that's like adding insult to injury almost. Yeah, that, in a way. that was just heartbreaking. I, I do have to say that this story, uh, when I remember when I first read it, it was on a very bad day for me. Mm. <laughs> so I wouldn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to tell you that I actually started crying while I was reading this. This was a very tough read. You too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Seriously. a very, well, the thing is, is, I was having a very off day when yeah. I read this, mm -hmm. so I was already sad, but just, it was a tough read, it reminded me of all the things that life brings to you, and then suddenly mm -hmm. to just see it take it away for some, mm -hmm. no other more reason than that you just can't remember it, and you're right, long-term memory is not affected too much. But, like, be, the ability to do things and the mm -hmm. ability to have sh tasks that you are currently doing, <coughs> mm -hmm. right. in a way it goes away because a lot of people say it's because of brain function, and that's true, but I honestly think it's because 
people are just so depressed with how their life is and that they can't remember other things mm -hmm. that they just don't feel like doing it. And, and they just feel like they just shut themselves out and they just only care. They want to go back to what they were before. And that's what, mm -hmm. that's typical human nature, unfortunately, when you get old enough. Mm -hmm. And it was just hard to watch that. And I, 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 have, that. I, I attended a seminar. About, I'm going to be very brief. I attended a seminar mm -hmm. about this and I was told every time you tell them something like what time is it or what day is it it's always the first time for them mm -hmm. it's always the very first time and I could have taught the seminar myself but that was neither here nor there mm -hmm. so but this was very hard for uh, me as well mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky for me because my first three grandparents all died very suddenly mm -hmm. and you would think that that's a bad thing but I almost feel that a slower more forgetful death is worse because you're sitting there and you have to do all the support for someone who's not even going to remember you mm -hmm. in a way and this book kind of mm -hmm. showed that you know with having to watch Jonathan but like mm -hmm. after a while how is he gonna you know and to get uh, the, the point of view from the person that's been inflicted uh, right. and you also <clears throat> get his wife's point of view yeah because uh, he was not in any condition to perform in the church, uh, but uh, when they convinced her enough, they convinced uh, uh, Mose uh, enough with uh, the kind of encouragement that they uh, that they uh, implied, and uh, and it turned out not being the uh, it, it didn't turn out being what they uh, it hardly ever does yeah. if you think about it. Which the uh, and when you talk about somebody with, uh, you also, uh, when you're talking about people inflicted with conditions, uh, the uh, uh, Yang uh, Jia, uh, the wife, was also had a, uh, a condition of her own. Uh, I think I remember. Th like there was something interesting I got from the story, other than the, the main Alzheimer's uh, dementia. Atrial fulbration. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Atrial uh, fulbration. Uh, Fibulation. Uh, with the heart, obviously. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but that was, it also seemed to talk a lot about Korean culture, mm -hmm. um, which I found fascinating, but it's almost as if, like, the Korean culture kind of just disappeared as time went on because they were so focused on the other stuff. Because that's, I think it was uh, put in there in order to talk about how they came to be, and these are memories he still has. Uh, he still remembers uh, meeting her and the, the environment, mm -hmm. the food. And again, that's a that's a long term yes. memory that you would want to go. Basically, if you want to go back to it, you're going to remember it. He can't remember to write a simple note to let his wife know that she needs to call her daughter when she gets home. Mm -hmm. Can't even get the pen to do it. But and I, I mean, I again with us, my situation. We were able to, we we weren't doing this to be cruel, but we were doing this because we were told to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Now you don't do that, but at the time it was, where were you born? She'll tell you, she was able to say exactly what time, what day, what place, where she lived, what she did for a living. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. what, what Hi, Grandma. To say about so this anyway, uh, don't mean to be Debbie Downer. Uh, I actually had no real experience with Alzheimer's, obviously not first-hand, but, right. but also second-hand. But you have, it is fair to say that you've told me a couple times that sometimes you do um, feel like you've forgotten something, like when you're at work and you're really frustrated and you've just forgotten to do something and then like you'll get, you'll, you'll either get in trouble or something bad will happen later, but isn't that frustrating? It's yeah. kind of the same feeling, isn't it? It's always frustrating to have that little blank spot appear in your head, especially if it's something vital, something to make the connection spark, if I may compare the neurological system to a, an electricity generator or well, something like that. Even a temporary lapse in judgment is mm. could be catastrophic in the wrong location or time. God forbid, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. especially if you, let's say you're driving, or let's say you're operating heavy machinery. Mm -hmm. or other things of that nature. I, um, back to the culture of this, I, I feel Korean culture is not something I know much about. Mm -hmm. um, so it found, found it interesting, but it did remind me of a couple of uh, 
things I do know about Korean culture and like their food mm-hmm. and their uh, stuff like that. But it, it's it's not just it, here. It seems to be more about uh, behavioral aspects. Of the, the Alzheimer's though was the concentration right. of this story, yes. and I think that uh, having a Dual concentration would be too overwhelming because it's already. So put, I, I'm just saying that this has a, as, as a back. I'm more talking yeah. about this as a background uh, mm-hmm. mention, not necessarily. I know the Alzheimer's and the dementia is the most. But it was interesting story. to hear about her background too, because she had two sisters and they went to different er- uh, different countries. One of them has since passed away. And it's it's even more confusing to go through the this particular story with the dual concentration. Especially if you're not reading the story all in one go. Mm -hmm. I confess I did the broke it down into multiple sessions and came out of it. It's a long read. uh, Admittedly, none the wiser. If it wasn't for the fact I was reading much longer and rich material, I probably may have found myself doing the same thing. It took it took me a um, it took me a little while to get through it. I think that the message, this is one of the few literary works where I think that the story itself isn't anything special, but the message that comes across from it is the right. most powerful message that I you think, can publicly come I, I think the story was somewhat strong because yeah. I think the char- I think that uh, Mose and his uh, interaction with his grandson, he wants the soda. So he and then he wanted the ice cream. Yeah, he wanted the ice cream, and he was tossing the coins into the pool. Yeah, he was, gonna, like he he was thinking wishing. about how he was going to teach him how to swim and uh, how to ride a bike. That's just and those then, kind of things. And, you, and you see how, like, mm-hmm. I think it's more about like what you are not going to be able to do, even though mm-hmm. someone wants to do it with you. Mm-hmm. In a way, yeah, and uh, we all forget forget the forget the loss of memory for a second. That could apply to anyone. Like, for instance, if Trevor here uh, wanted to do a uh, a bike thing for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, which I know you're a big uh, member of, and I couldn't do it because I can't ride a bike, I feel a little bit upset too. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it's it's more because of memory mm-hmm. and just not being able to even. And Trevor could keep saying, you know, oh, keep do do the bike race, blah blah mm-hmm. blah, and I could be like, yeah, let's do it, but I know I can't do it. I think it's just in general where we say that we want to do all of these great things with other people, and yet we can't close on the commitment because of something that's unforeseen. Whether it's we don't have the time, the money, or the energy, and usually when do we in each generation. We have two, but we don't have one. You mean we have two, but we don't kids have three? Have, uh, kids have the time and energy, they don't have the money. Oh, okay. Adults have the money and energy, they don't have the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And older people have the time and money, they don't have the energy. And in a way, that, that applies to individual generations, too, not mm-hmm. just kids, adults, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and, like, but there are periods of time. There are exceptions to those rules, though, because... Uh, there are people that don't have... No, they're spoiled brats, unfortunately. Not necessarily. I mean, there's people that struggle to have money, so... That too. That's that. And even in the rare instances where they have time, the money, and the energy, do they really have the... Do the they wherewithal? use it properly? Yes. Yeah. Right. Do they use it properly? Most you can use have something, all three but use it properly. But... Do we have any final thoughts about tough, this? Tough story. This is a story that deserves and even needs to be read more than once to understand it from all viewpoints to just get the get all the questions out of the way then read it with only at least one of the questions in mind so you can get through that one and then take another question read it again then so on and so forth until the questions are all answered and then you finally and then we'll question final, it are all finally, the questions answered is the question. Well, true. You'd be adding more questions down the point as, 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 as many as you could think of at that particular time. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a matter of what... Uh, I think that there's this is a strong testament of what contemporary literature has to offer. I'm happy that we were able to go over this as a You're contemporary happy. short story. Sorry. When, when, does the, when was this written? This was... I'm curious. You are right. The, Copyright on this. I'm not so. It was released. Okay, I see. 2017. Oh, so the story was written recently. Yes, oh. it was. It was written. It was 
pub- it was published in the New England Review in 2017. Okay, so that actually and I thought it was released enough. in the Best American Short Stories in 2018. So I have to say then is I actually thought this was from a little a little longer ago than that. Mm-hmm. But the fact that I know that it's very modern, I, I think that it, it speaks volumes now mm-hmm. um, to what I initially thought. This this just because you told me that it it hit it hit me harder now because I didn't realize it was that recent. Wow, mm-hmm. that's a that's a that's a heartbreaker. Because mm-hmm. well, does the story take place like modern times too? Yeah, it does. Because he was born. Uh, Mose was born in nineteen forty. So that makes I sense. would imagine that it is current. He'd be in his seventies. He'd be seventy-seven years old, and his wife would be seventy-two. And also, I just want to say this: seventy-seven is early for these things to start happening. These oh, yeah. days, these it days. happens. It's fe- yeah. There's most people like I know that my uh, grandfather is at this moment. He is ninety-two. And he's only just started showing the symptoms of it, like a year ago. The, the scary thing is there are people that get dementia very young. They get it 30 years old. Uh, yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's quite... Yeah. It's almost... It, that's when it's very... They're in the nursing home because they can't uh, be left alone for... I, I think what time. we need to remember as a society is that there mm-hmm. is no norm for when things can happen. Mm-hmm. You could get in a car crash and lose yes. your memory. You could get mm-hmm. into any kind of... I don't... Honestly, I don't mean to be like a, a, a downer here, but no, this is fine. this is a this is what happens with life, and sometimes mm-hmm. you know it's going to happen, and then everything's going to change just like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I have to say that this story really touched me, um, touched my heart a lot, mm-hmm. pulled at my heartstrings, mm-hmm. pulled so hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Already then, if you're interested in checking out this and other short stories from the Best American Short Stories of 2018, here is a copy. Uh, this was original, specifically, uh, this story was published in volume 38, uh, issue number two of uh, New England Review. Is that a newspaper or a magazine? It's like a, a magazine, yeah. It's kind of, I would say, in the vein of The New Yorker. Oh, or okay. something like that, the Paris Review. I, I, have, I have to say this cause before we finish, but this probably, this particular discussion is probably the most in-depth discussion I've ever had, probably on Literary Gladiators. I really, mm-hmm. really, despite being a very tough story to read, I enjoyed this discussion quite mm-hmm. a lot. It was a very uh, heart-wrenching. Not even because of the content, but just because just every, everyone contributed, and mm-hmm. I, I, I just wanted and to And I say think that. each of us has an experience uh, as far as somebody that has mm-hmm. been, uh, that has had to inflict, uh, that was inflicted with. Or, or in, in your case, more like when, you're, when you're kind of frustrated when you've forgotten to do something, which I know mm-hmm. that that's something you mentioned a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Right? Already oh. then. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep, keep reading. reading. reading.